Thank you. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting. Uh, what's the date? March 12, 2018. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for a moment of silence afterwards, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, we have a moment of silence for Stanley Shora, who recently passed away. Stanley was a proud veteran of the U.S. Navy, volunteered for many years at the Abington Senior Center. Stanley would be deeply missed by his loving family and many friends. Thank you. Uh, public announcements. We have a lot of public announcements starting with the board, and then we'll move on to uh, public announcements from the Abington Celebration Committee. Uh, Tom. Tom, Pots and Pizzazz, Enchanted Gardens is the topic for the next meeting of the Abington Garden Club on Monday, March 19th at the Parish Hall of the United Church of Christ, Route 18, Bedford Street. Jana Milbacher and Joan Butler, both past presidents of the Holliston Garden Club and active in the Garden Club Federation of Massachusetts, will give a lecture on a variety of horticultural and garden design topics from whimsical to grand. Their jazzy containers and pots will inspire and teach you to design your own potted masterpieces. A luncheon will, a luncheon will be served at 12 p.m., followed by the lecture at 1 p.m. The public is invited. Thank you, Alex. And on Saturday, March 17th, this Saturday coming up, 1 o'clock, the Boston Bruins alumni will once again take on the Hug Foundation Ice Huggers at the Rockland Ice Rink, 599 Summer Street, Rockland. Tickets are $15 for adults, $5 for kids under 12. Uh, there will be free autographs and pitches with the Bruins alumni between periods and raffles. Um, after the game, there will be a party at the Polish Club with the Bruins alumni. Tickets available at the door for both the game and the after party or hugfoundationma.org. All proceeds will benefit the Hug Foundation with the portion of the proceeds going to the Teen Challenge program this year. So if you haven't been, I urge you to come by. It's a great time to see some of the old, uh, well, retired, I mm -hmm. won't call them. <laughs> Thank you. That's right. That's it. We're going to go from hockey to pickleball. Mr. Bourbon? Uh, the Abington Pickleball Association. Pickleball beginner clinics and the Abington Pickleball Association's dedicated courts adjacent to the Abington Senior Center. Dates May 7th or May 9th or May 14th or the 16th or the 22nd or the 24th. Register for one two-hour clinic, 10 a.m. until 12 o'clock p.m. Maximum 12 per class. $10 for the beginner clinic which will be deducted from your $50 membership fee if you decide as an Abington resident to join the Abington Pickleball Association. Register online at abingtonpickleball at gmail.com with your name, email, cell phone, and the clinic date you desire to attend. Thank you. Mr. Manning. You can't take it with you. That's an old saying. <laughs> the Abington High School Drama Club probably presents the Pulitzer Prize winning comedy. You can't take it with you. On March 15th and 16th, as timely as ever, follow the antics of grandpa and the rest of the household as they go about their business of living their life through the term, on their terms. Tickets may be purchased at the door or in advance online by visiting showtick4u.com. That's S-H-O-T-I-X 4U.com. National Youth Art Month. Youth Art Month is the national celebration promoting the value of art, creating process and, and importance of quality art education. For this occasion, the Abington Art Department is currently exhibiting artwork from the students from grades 1 through 12 throughout the Abington Public Library. The ex exhibition for over 250 works of art will continue through March 31st. Additionally, we, we also host viewing afternoon on March 22nd from 4.30 from to 6 for students and their families and the community at large. Please attend. Alert. Snowbastic storm coming. Guess what? Trash is delayed tomorrow. Everybody who has a Tuesday collection, your trash will be delayed. We'll go on to Wednesday. As long as Wednesday is a trash day, I urge you to call the Board of Health at 1-781-982-2119, I believe it is, to make sure any updates on the voicemail will alert you to changes of trash beyond Tuesday. But I'm telling you, as of right now, there will be no trash tomorrow. Put your barrels back out of the street so they don't get pushed all over the place. 
and we'll try again on Wednesday if God willing the, the snow allows us. And finally, guess what happens this Sunday? It's St. Patrick's Day in Abington. Please come on down to the Abington St. Patrick's Day Parade. That's at 1 o'clock. Come down and enjoy. Don't let a little snow get in your way. Thank you. Well, I have a full page of... <laughs> you got to follow that, Kenny. <laughs> no, that's all right. I, I can't make that noise. Um, I'm just going to say, suffice it to say, the Abington Public Library has a plethora, that's a big word for me, plethora, plethora of events from now to April 2nd, including a documentary, game night, clue game night, historian Gary Highlander will be there talking about the Lindbergh uh, kidnapping, um, dropping book discussions, and the, the Abington Reed selection is Murder on the Orient Express. There's too much to talk about, but go to their uh, website and uh, or stop in the library to visit them. Uh, Abington Celebrates Committee, would you like to come up, please? Uh, they want to talk about some exciting things going on with the Abington Celebrates uh, Weekend, fi uh, Founders Day weekend. <laughs> wow, they have props, they beat you. <coughs> Good evening, I didn't know we were going to have such a turnout tonight for just Abington Celebrates. Abington Celebrates is a newly formed committee. We're four years old this year. Started out with Flag Day, Founders Day. The second year we joined in with Oktoberfest and then Christmas at Island Grove. We're really gonna start focusing on Flag Day, Founders Day weekend, which is June uh, 6th through the 8th, if I'm correct. Um, no, 8th, 9th, and 10th, excuse me. And we're going to be in the St. Patrick's Day Parade on Sunday with uh, our beautiful new banners that we have and some people carrying buckets. The whole point of Abington Celebrates when we started, we we're a volunteer committee with only one person, the events coordinator that reports to the town manager. The rest of us are not appointed people, we're just people that have nothing to do with our time. <laughs> and um, there's a group of eight of us, uh, Doug Ulwick is the events coordinator, myself, I'm Jan Prell, Nancy Reed, Michelle Christian, Ken Coyle, Alex and Lisa Bazanson, and did I miss anybody? Christy oh, Christy Coombs, excuse me. And we also resurrected a fishing derby last year, thanks to uh, Mr. Bob Manning, and a road race, thanks to Mr. Burbine, which will again happen this year on Saturday. The whole reason we kind of started this thing was to not only have family events that are free, other than food that you purchase, that you don't have to travel an hour for an Oktoberfest, you can have one in your own town. We can have Christmas at Island Grove, light a tree, have the children see Santa Claus, you know, uh, cook gingerbread men in the cabin at the Grove, which is now kind of restored. Uh, Flag Day, Founders Day, to have the encampment at Island Grove with the Civil War reenactors, and many other things going on for the weekends that we do, and Oktoberfest down in front of the uh, Frolio School and Memorial Field. We want to bring fireworks back to Abington. This would not be the night before the fourth fireworks. We are not the night before the fourth committee. We never admitted that we are. We're just a town committee that wants to do it. They would not be in July. They would be Flag Day, Founders Day weekend. Abington was founded on June 10th of eight, uh, 1712. So we're 306 years old this year. So anyway, we're hoping to put together something and hopefully try for fireworks this year on Friday or Saturday night of the weekend of the 8th, 9th, and 10th. What we're looking for is sponsors. We like businesses, we challenge businesses. We already have one business that has vol volunteered $1,000 in a three-year sponsorship, 1,000 each year. We'd like to challenge other businesses out there. If we had 15 that gave you know, 1,000 each year, we'd be able to have $15,000 worth of fireworks. We also found out with the um, Abington's 300th that fireworks are much less money in June, and you also get a rain date, which you do not get in July. So if it was rainy on Friday night, we'd have them on Saturday. So that's our ultimate goal is to bring back fireworks for the Flag Day Founders Day weekend. We hope to do it this year, but we need your assistance. People will be walking with buckets next to our decorated truck in the St. Patrick's Day Parade looking for you know any donation that you wanna make. We're also going to be, um, actually it's being set up now. There is going to be an Abington Celebrates newsletter. You can log on to it via Facebook under Abington Celebrates or if you go to the town website under announcements at the very front page down at the bottom, you can also click the link there and sign up. That will be coming out. It'll be short to start off. We'll get bigger and bigger as we have more events and more things to announce. Um, but the big thing, of course, is the parade this weekend where we'll all be sitting on mounds of snow <coughs> and uh, watching this wonderful parade that's in its 39th year. 
and uh, you know, really looking forward to it. So we just want to let everybody know about Abington Celebrates. Again, we're at our fourth year <coughs> with uh, Flag Day Founders Day weekend. Oktoberfest in uh, Christmas Island Grove will be our third year this year. And uh, everything, again, it's, it's, it's family oriented, it's free. But <coughs> if you want fireworks, we need donations. We need do donations from individuals, we need donations from businesses. We'd like a three year commitment so we're not yapping at you every year looking for money. You can mail a check, donation, or anything to the town hall right here, here of Abington Celebrates. Write that on your check. It's 500 Glinowitz Way. If you don't know how to spell it by now, go look it up. In Abington, zip code 02351. The more money that comes in, you know, we hope to be able to announce maybe April, beginning of May, that we've collected thousands of dollars and we can have this massive fireworks, bring in porta potties, you know, have other fun things to do, and uh, local vendors, um, you know, Abington people with food and stuff down there, that would be for purchase, but everything else would be hopefully free. So that's our, our goal is to bring fireworks back on the same weekend in June every year. So dig down deep into your pocket, send us a check, and we'll let you know in a month or so via the selectmen's meeting or other ways through Facebook and stuff that uh, we've accomplished our goal. But we probably this year are looking in somewhere needing of about $30,000. So it's a lot of money. The fireworks we're looking at is about a $15,000 show. So just giving you heads up, but we are Abington Celebrates. We're a very small group and we serve an awful lot of people in Abington. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Good job. <coughs> Good job. All right. 15 minutes worth of announcements. We have a 6.30 appointment. Sonia Hedges, our treasurer collector, has come, and that's what you saw us signing before the meeting. Uh, I will entertain a motion. Those are the bonds. Uh, vote to approve the sale of $1 million bonds for the replacement of water mains as approved at the May 20, 22, 2017 annual town meeting. Um, this wording here, I will, I will read it if somebody wants to make the motion afterwards. Okay. Voted the sale of $1 million general obligation water main bonds of the town dated March 16, 2018 to Roosevelt and Cross Inc. at the price of $1,037,602.50 and accrued interest, if any, is hereby approved and confirmed. The bond shall be payable on March 15th of the years in the principal amounts and bear interest at the respective rate that is followed in this document, which we have in front of us. So that would be the motion. Motion to accept the terms as spoken. Motion made and seconded uh, what I read. Um, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous vote, thank you. Thank you, Sonia. <coughs> 635, transfer of a class two license, 135 Bedford Street, is <coughs> the application of, and I'm gonna mess the name up, Emery Umit available. Come on up, Emery. Uh, transfer of a class two license from Abington Auto Sales to F1 Auto Sales, 135 Bedford Street. I know Abington Auto Sales has been there quite a long time. Welcome. Thank you. This is a sticker. So you want to transfer um, ownership yep. of this? this part. Okay. Um, any questions from the board? It, it looks like all everything is in order. All uh, any back ta taxes have been paid. There's a plot plan as to where the cars will be parked. I don't think there's any. Are they changing operation of hours? Or everything? We have a small car for sale, and three cars, three for employee, and three for the customer. So the same as before. Okay. Yes. Excellent. Um, we have a notice can from. I just ask a question. Right. Absolutely. Proposed hours of operation, Monday through Friday, nine to six. Is that what you're looking? Exactly. Yeah. Right. And Saturday, three to six. No, I'm sorry, nine to six. Yep. Only Sunday. Sunday, to Sunday you close. Yep. Okay. Because it looks like prior they were open on Sundays and the hours were different, but that's fine. Thanks. Yep. Yep. Just wanted to that. Does anybody have any other questions, concerns, or comments? I know we have from, from the fire department has inspected it and have no issues with the transfer of the license. The same, same number of cars as prior? Same number of cars? Yep. Okay. And it looks like the back taxes have been paid up. Present sign, Jake. Yep. Move we approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the transfer. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous vote. Congratulations. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh wait, did uh, anyone have questions, Kenny? Kenny, we didn't ask questions. I'm sorry, oh, it was a public hearing, I apologize. Let's still actually. Yeah, we have a question. Okay, sure. can we answer it? It looks like Mr. Unger. Come on back up. I apologize, I'm in such a rush to get to the fun stuff. It, it 
or big trees? Well, I think SUVs fall in the car range, but big trailers, yeah. it would just be cars. Oh, we're not gonna have any big SUVs or big cars fall like that. It's only gonna be sedan car, maybe van, or maybe pickup, something else. I'm sorry, I say it's only gonna be sedan car, pickup, or SUVs, not the big truck or big van. Just small use of cars. Just, just like, just like this Raspberry. Absolutely. Like no major change. Nope, absolutely. Okay. Exactly the same thing. Now that I've messed it up completely, any other questions from the audience? Okay. All right. I think you're all set. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Let me do this one right. How's that sound? The Board of Selectmen will hold a public hearing on Monday, March 12, 2018, at 645 in the Carter Ring on the application of J. Yasmin Zachary for a wine malt cordial license for Yaz's table, 1209. Uh, Ken Coyle, Chairman. Come on up, Yaz. Uh, I know we um, approved this transfer, I think at our last Couple meeting, ago, yeah. and this is just to add a wine malt cordial license. We have, they have one available, or is this a new one? Yes, there's one available. There's yep. one available. This is a new one, it's, it's available. So what is it for, specifically? Is this a full liquor license? It's no. just a wine malt and cordial. But if Abington yeah. has a full liquor license, I'll be more yeah. than happy to jump <laughs> on that. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so it's just cordial wine. Wine. Yeah. beer and wine? That's correct. Thank you. Now, I know you opened, what, had a soft opening last week, was it? Yes. Yes, I heard uh, good rave, thing. rave reviews. Yes, that's great. In fact, had reviews. record sales on our first grand opening weekend um, than Cream has ever experienced in the two and a half years of being open, so that was very surprising. Excellent. I'll give, you, I'll give you a plug. This is what Cream used to be, the Cream restaurant. This is Yaz's table. Um, questions from the board? You're all TIP certified, anybody who's serving yeah. the alcohols? Yeah, for the tips courses. Have the hours changed anywhere? Tips are for Jan through Jan every year. So same same hours as you're operating at this point in time. You have that. Yes, but I do have future plans of having um, opening for dinner, maybe three nights. You had mentioned that the last time you were here. Right. Yeah. What time are you open till now? Uh, right now we're from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. Tuesday through Sunday. Okay. There were some concerns from the zoning enforcement officer. Right. Well, they've all been signed off though, so it looks like they're okay. Okay, any questions? Any other comments from the board? Questions? Public hearings. Oh, yep, see, thanks for reminding me. <laughs> Good with that. I didn't see anybody raise their hand. No, anybody have any comments or concerns? Has anybody eaten there yet? No? Okay, just wondering. Okay, motion to accept the issuance of a uh, wine, cordial, and beer license to the establishment as mentioned. Yeah, my document says a mine. You probably don't want any mines at your place, so it's supposed to be wine, malt, and cordial, yes. I am Motion. open to a lot of ideas. So. <laughs> 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 it's a new drink. Um, did I have a second? Oh, second. Motion and second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Thank you. Thank Good you. luck. Good luck. Approval of wine, malt. Okay, can I see that thing too? Um, 6.50, actually we're getting pretty close to time now. Um, Carrie Bates, update from Griffin's Dairy Committee. <laughs> is Carrie here? Oh, there she is. Welcome. I know I caught you off hand at Trugies and I said, can you please come to our next meeting for an update? So thank Absolutely. you, we appreciate that. Thank you, Carolyn Bates, 41 Oakland Circle. Before you start, oh, one um, we, I have something here I need to read. Abington's Best Award, March 12, 2018, Gordon and Carolyn Carrie Bates. This is the longest one I've, we've ever written, okay? So, I you might want to take a seat. Yes, you might want to sit down. So we have a lot of people here that, that um, appreciate all you've done for the town, and we appreciate you, what you two have done for the town. So I'm going to read it. I'm actually going to take a break in the middle and let one of the other members read it too. So don't cry yet. Whereas, Abington has several people who quietly volunteer a great amount of their time to help the people in the community of Abington. The efforts and accomplishments of these people are major reasons that Abington is such a wonderful place to live. For many years, two of these people have been Gordon and Carrie Bates. Whereas, Gordon is a lifelong resident of Abington, a true townie. He enjoyed many special times growing up in the family home at 4 Temple Street on the corner near what is, was the first national grocery store and now Trukies. Gordon developed a strong work ethic as a child as taught by his parents, Kenneth and Helen. He delivered newspapers even when the snow was piled high. 
He'll probably use you tomorrow. Whereas in 1939, he was a member of the first class to attend school in the newly built North School where his daughter Julie attended 40 years later. Gordon attended Abington High School as what is now the Charles M. Frolio School. He was a three sports star earning a total of 12 varsity letters during his four years of high school and serving as class president in 1952. Amazing. Whereas Gordon really put Abington on the map when it came to his talent as a baseball pitcher. These accomplishments were discussed in detail during his induction to the Abington Athletic Hall of Fame in October 2015. Highlights with, were when he received an offer to play for the Philadelphia Phillies and he was signed by the Boston Braves while still in high school. He also enjoyed football and played for the Abington Old Town. He was a great player but had his nose broken by a Walter Pastor pass. Walter gave, <laughs> <laughs> Walter gave him no sympathy, however, telling Gordon, you should have caught it. <laughs> he also inspired young players when he coached Abington Little League and Junior Legion. He then became a teacher and baseball coach in the Hingham schools and continued to support Abington youth sports as a resident and parent. Whereas Gordon was a member of the Abington Town Building Committee where he had a major role in the coordination of volunteers painting the town hall on Randolph Street. He also served on the board of directors at the North mm -hmm. Abington Cooperative Bank. Now the Abington Bank has been a volunteer at the Abington Food Pantry each Tuesday evening for many years. Whereas Gordon has also volunteered his time and skills on many other charitable and community activities. He is renowned for making beautiful doll houses and fire station models and has donated some of his creations to be sold by charitable groups. Whereas whether it's sports, teaching, family relationships, friendships, helping those in need or anything else he does in his life, Gordon sets an extremely high standard for himself. He is a pers person of tremendous integrity. That is why he is extremely well liked and highly respected. Um, Gordon met his wife Carrie while teaching at S S South Junior High in Hingham and they were married in 1964. The couple hired local builder Freeman Atwood to build their home at 41 Oakland Circle on a quiet cul-de-sac where they still live today. They were so anxious to move in that they slept in sleeping bags on the wood floor while he was still finishing the home, even though there was no electricity or running water yet. <laughs> okay, that's the portion about Gordon. Now the portion about Carrie. And I'm going to let one of your apt piano pupils, students, take over. Mr. Burbine? No, that wouldn't be me. <laughs> <laughs> So whereas Carrie grew up in Princeton, New Jersey, as a young girl, she showered her helpfulness, I'm sorry, showed her helpfulness early by offering to help Al Albert Einstein cross the street when he was walking to the university to teach. <laughs> Once Carrie moved to Abington, she quickly became active in our community and has become an honorary Abington townie. She loved children and enjoyed hosting the neighborhood kids at the house for playtime with her daughter. She volunteered in her daughter Julie's classroom during the elementary years and later was an active member of the Abington Band Parents Association, attending competitions and an occasional band trip out of state and helped raise money for the band. She has also been a member of the Abington Child Study Group and served on the Cultural Council. Whereas, like Gordon, Carrie has a strong work ethic, which she too learned from her parents, Chandler and Gladys Wentworth. She is a true Jack or Jill of all trades and uses her many skills to help those around her. She often finds herself using her technical and mechanical skills to help people fix things, which she likely gets from her father, an engineer, but is also very compassionate and understanding, which she gets from her mother, who was a social worker. Carrie combines this with her musical talents, which have enriched Abington in countless ways. Carrie has been the organist and sometimes a singer at both the United Church of Christ and St. Bridget's Parish for many years. This work has also meant she is helping plan the religious ceremonies at both churches. She has also played at the Abington Baptist Church and other churches in the area. Carrie is frequently involved in helping families plan the music for wedding and funerals. Which she does with her special brand of kindness and sensitivity. All this is in addition to teaching many, many students of all ages how to play piano and sing from her home. Most people in town have at some point taken lessons with Carrie and know someone, or know someone who has. Whereas Carrie has also been the director of many choral groups in town, including the Abington Town Chorus, the UCC Choir, Bell Choir, the St. Bridget's Choir, and Youth Choral and Bell Groups. She has also been a member of the Abington Community Band. She has performed in many town concerts. Whereas in all her musical endeavors, Carrie is wonderful in coordinating with other people. 
She is very giving of her time and energy whenever necessary to fill in if others are sick and to make sure the end product sounds beautiful. It takes a true professional to roll with the punches when unexpected things occur. Whereas for the last few years, Carrie has been the chairperson of the Griffin's Dairy Committee and has played a major role in the recent improvements at the farm. This has involved a huge commitment of her time attending meetings and coordinating with many different individuals regarding the plan for reuse of this land. Sustainability and environmental responsibility are very important to Carrie, and she focuses a lot on these issues in her daily life, using minimal resources through recycling, heating her home with a wood-burning stove as much as possible, limiting electricity use, collecting rainwater, and growing her own vegetables and herbs, to name a few. She won the Victory Garden Contest a few years ago because of the vegetables, herbs, and edible flowers she grows in her garden. Whereas in addition to Carrie's musical contributions to the church, Gordon and Carrie have been active in many other ways at the United Church of Christ over the years as loyal attendees and volunteers for whatever needs to be done for the church and its charitable activities. Gordon has also served on the Board of Trustees. Whereas Gordon and Carrie together are a team often quietly helping others. Many of their neighbors have woken up after a snowstorm to find Gordon and Carrie have snow plowed their driveway and cleared off their cars. When friends or neighbors need help, Gordon and Carrie are there to fix problems in their house and paint where needed. They are very generous with their time and their gifts, never looking for recognition or accolades. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Selectmen hereby presents this Abington's best, best proclamation on behalf of the town of Abington and its residents recognizing Gordon and Carrie Bates with gratitude and appreciation for all they have done for the town and the people of Abington for making our town a better place to live. Thank you, Gordon and Carrie, Abington Board of Selectmen, Kenneth Coyle Chairman, Robert Manning Vice Chairman, Alex Bazanson, Thomas Connolly, Andrew Burbine. Congratulations. <laughs> Unusual. <laughs> I get the same. <laughs> this was a complete surprise because we kept it a surprise because we thought it was for Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I want to thank you all very, very much. And uh, as you all know, you know I, I enjoy uh, being uh, in, in the town of Abington. I enjoy growing up here, and it really is a, a great, great place to live. Great place to live. And I thank you very much. And my, the highlight of my teaching career was meeting my wife. Oh, <laughs> that was great. Thank you. Hey, you're say to you. yeah. Well, the highlight of my <laughs> teaching career was meeting my husband. <laughs> and we and we do love our wood stove. It's. Probably <laughs> that room is the best room in the whole house. Yep. And it's good getting out and getting the exercise and getting the wood and bringing in the bags every day and uh, just keeping it stocked and the yeah. whole business. I can't think of anything else to say, but <laughs> it's been a wonderful 54 years and we're going on forward. I really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, some people want to talk. See I you, think Ian Riley and Lorraine yeah, want to say something. I heard. Thank, thank you for everything. Yeah, yeah thank you. Sir. Thank, thank you, Ian. Tom, thanks thank for everything. Thank you for everything. You don't want them? Yeah, yeah. I called you all. You have to say something now. <laughs> I, think, I think Ian wanted to uh, add some comments. I'm so glad we count. She's going to give a report, but you can you can you can talk now if you want. All right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to let her give her short report, and then we're going to take a little break afterwards so everybody can congratulate her. And Ann wants to say a couple yeah, comments, yeah. okay? 
Short, short report. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this was this was four pages, so that's only two. Okay, perfect. Okay. The, when our last update was in July, and since then, it's just the entire project has just taken on a life of its own. Uh, everybody on the committee has worked so diligently to make it work, and uh, I've I've got the best committee going. It's just it's wonderful, but. Before that, um, in July, I wrote to the selectmen on my update, people that have helped us. And I'd like to do that first, is to thank these people, um, particularly, the, well, the, all of the local businesses. The local businesses, oh, my granddaughter's here. Oh, my <laughs> You'll get to see him, hurry up and finish. <laughs> speed read, remember the word speed read. So, um, <laughs> Elliot Tree, he took down some trees, you know, he's, he's so good. He took down um, invasive trees for us and cleaned up and, and then allowed us to get started on that entrance on Plymouth Street. Four Seasons Power Equipment donated two ride-on lawnmowers. And uh, that's, that's huge. Both of these people are just huge. And Fruit Disposal um, donated a whole roll-off. Um, a roll-off is a huge container which rolls off the back of the truck. We filled it overflowing with brush and unwanted things that we couldn't burn. And uh, the fire department, the um, Trukies, Trukies with, uh, with Kenny, you know, you go ask Kenny anything, you, you know, and he'll, they'll come up with it. It's just, it's wonderful. Sion Landscape, they did all the landscaping in the front for us. Um, and planted uh, some uh, trees and bushes and things like that, and uh, it allowed us to go in and with other little plants. Um, al along with that was Bob Libby, and he was very helpful um, with Sion's and John Warner. That's I'm skipping around, but they were to get, they were together. John had the big equipment, and he unearthed an old uh, sink. <laughs> so we've got that now over toward the community garden for. Oh, washing afterwards. So uh, that that's always good. Um, uh, LaPointe, uh, Glenn LaPointe, he donated part of that first walking trail uh, to us. Uh, God bless him, really. Um, Gosselin Landscape, uh, Karen Gosselin, she did a landscape um, plan for us uh, out front, and the design. And um, Let's see, then Walmart and Lowe's, they, they donated things for us, and we had the um, April, the uh, Earth Day cleanup. So um, I think, I hope I didn't forget anybody in that. But individuals, Bill Davis, who is standing back there, has got his, he has a, a tractor, and he tills the community gardens every year. He's taken down trees. He was there Saturday, he was there yesterday taking down, cleaning up the trees that had fallen in the last storm. And uh, we certainly appreciate that. And Jack Kelleher, with his equipment, he's moved boulders and rocks and wood and uh, moved earth and spread things out so that, and planted grass. And he's, all of these people in town, they're just incredible. As Gordon says, this is a fabulous town, just a fabulous town. Um, Jack Bailey gets up there every week and and mows. So um, it, when it's it's mowing, he won't mow tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> and Tom Peck, Tom Peck had had uh, he's done repairs on the shed. He helped us uh, move the shed. Uh, the uh, uh, he has uh, he took care of the food pantry gardens. Two gardens took the food up there. The entire thing. Um, let's see, um, Susan Weaver with a knotwood. The, the, she lives across the street in the Japanese knotwood. She saw Anna and myself out there cu cutting it up and we took a whole day and just cut that stuff down. And Jack Bailey comes and moves it every week. So it won't come back, hopefully. But um, let's see, um, Terry Nichol, she gave us a lot of information and her husband, uh, uh, Brent uh, Johnson, a lot of information on the knotweed and how invasive it is. Wayne Norling, Wayne Norling is in also incredible. He put this overhead up. Uh, it's, it, 
this is the um, map of the, the, what we're gonna go do in the future. The Abington Fire Department. I like the pictures better before that were up there. But. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Uh, the fire department, they sent up a, a, a detail for us for when we had the huge burn last, last year. Uh, uh, the police department, they put up the signs for no hunting. Uh, all the departments in town, um, the accountant, the treasurer, everybody has been so good. Uh, it's, it's, it's just wonderful working here and, and asking, and not to mention the a town, moder uh, town moderator, uh, the town manager and the assistant town manager. The assistant town manager is one of my piano students years ago. <laughs> also not <laughs> apt. <laughs> More apt than I am, believe me. I have memories. <laughs> okay, so I think... Did I, did I leave anybody out? I hope I did not. Okay, there's Eddie, my son-in-law. Yes. Ed Riley and the football team this week. Oh, Eddie Riley, yes. Ed Riley came to, it brought two of his uh, young men from the football team and um, their names are in here. Oh, and then Jack Bailey brought two of his friends from the Coffee Clash. Uh, it, he was uh, Frank Boutillier and Doug McFarland and Ed came, uh, brought, uh, Dillian Margaru and Will Klein, and they helped us clean up brush uh, just in December, just before the uh, the first big storm, so w which we got 15 inches. Okay, so um, let's go on. Um, the surveying, what we've done is the surveying was completed so that fencing could be installed at both Patterson Street uh, location and, and uh, Plymouth Street location, that they're, um, they're uh, split rail fencing. Then we also have chain link fencing, which uh, was installed on property, the edges of property, so that people could not um, impose upon any private property. Uh, the picnic area was, uh, we've got that all in order, and uh, a couple of uh, picnic tables are going to be coming so that people can get up there and enjoy the area uh, and you can go up there and walk snowshoe and tomorrow and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday you'll probably be able to snowshoe and cross-country ski if you like um, I'll be up there with my snowshoes probably uh, Lorraine will be in and it probably will be also so <coughs> join us by all means um, let's see what else uh, the old golf shed, golf shed was moved over to the um, community garden area and uh, that's where we store the lawnmowers. Uh, the identifying sign. I saw that up on the screen. Uh, Griffin Dairy Farm. That was voted last year, and the, far, the, uh, the sign arrived in September, I believe, September or October, and was installed. And it's, it's lovely, and it's all the plantings around it are just beautiful. So uh, this, the uh, Patterson Street parking area well, both parking areas are still in a state of flux. We're just keeping to improve them. But the uh, Patterson Street parking area, that will kind of go into phase two walking path because of the gravel that is there. Um, let's see. We all, uh, several committee members, and uh, we, assist, we um, walked through, did a walkthrough with the town manager and assistant town manager to assess the feasibility of a solar array over there. Um, that was done in July. Um, okay, I, I talked about the no hunting signs. National Grid installed a, no, a, a telephone pole for us, and I think in the next year, or, or September, whenever the next round comes, we'll, we'll have a low wattage light up there at the head of the path, so, or the walking trail. In fact, even today, there was a man up there with his dog walking. Dogs will be welcome as long as uh, people bring their bags with them. So, uh, the, for the dogs. <laughs> that upset. You take that, okay. I just brought, I just brought four trail signs, which uh, with me tonight that we have, we'll be putting two of them up at the head of each trail uh, one at the head of each trail, and then one farther back on the, each of the trails. This is for phase one, which is just about done, and then phase two next year. So um, that should take care of what the needs are for what our expectations are, the people that are using the area. 
And um, then we met with the, um, okay, we met with the, assist the town manager and the assistant town manager about a plan for walking paths. And if you look over at the overhead, and I think each of the selectmen, you have a, a, a regular um, uh, hard copy yep. of, the, of our plan that is now, it's gone to DEP, it's been in the newspaper. Uh, the first, oh, should I walk over there? You want me to do it? <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 that would be good. So right in the center in the bottom of the, is, is the Plymouth Street parking area. And then the first trail goes off to the left and down and around to a, a, a ditch or an inter, uh, interim stream. Or, uh, and then on that, the, there's a bridge that's been constructed over that. So that's phase one. That's all done. Okay. Then phase two is going to go across, directly across, and it's going to, yes, join up with Patterson Street parking area, come back up all the way to a point there, and then take a jog right to a second bridge. That's phase two. And uh, that will be surveyed and uh, taken care of uh, so that we know exactly where the playing fields are, where uh, all the silt fencing needs to be done for construction, uh, all of that. Phase three is going to come off of the first trail and come up the west side of that ditch to another bridge and then go up and meet up with the, the second bridge. So there will then be a loop. Now, at this point, it's important to, to see that well, we really can't see it on this map, but at that corner up at the top of phase two before it gets to the bridge, Rich, up uh, right there. That you, that's a very little distance to the easement to the old sewer beds, which will take us over to the Hanover Rail Trail. And also, we can get to the Hanover Rail Trail and, uh, or the walking trail, is that what it's called, the Hanover Rail Trail, or is it? The Rail Trail. Yeah. Okay, um, go up uh, through the parking lot over at Patterson Street and then up Charles Street and you can connect up that way. So there are two ways to get to the rail trail. And also this provides a loop so that if you want to uh, park at Plymouth Street, you can do the, just do the loop and walk around that way. So that <coughs> all those paths are um, handicap accessible. In fact, um, Jean brought her mother, Mary Griffin, over a couple of weeks ago. It had dried out a little bit. It, she's in a wheelchair. It did take the two of us to uh, get her down and back because the, the ground was still a little bit soft from the winter. So when that dries out, it's going to be absolutely magnificent. So uh, it just needs settling in. The fourth phase is going to start right at that second bridge and come all the way up around, go east and then come back down around the uh, community gardens and back to Plymouth Street parking. So that is what we are waiting for DEP to decide upon whether or not this is feasible for us to accomplish this. Uh, and we're pretty sure that they'll agree they, it's, uh, it, we've gone forward and uh, the Community Preservation um, Act was, is just, uh, it, it's such a perfect <coughs> thing for this town to get things done. Uh, we, we couldn't do this, any of this without the, the, uh, that act. Uh, and the, the committee is more than cooperative. So um, let's see. <coughs> Anything else? Uh, oh, there's a pla we have just just uh, would like to have a plaque um, in honor of the Griffin family. Uh, they uh, ran this this farm area for many years as a dairy dairy farm, and uh, so we're working with the family concerning that plaque, and it will go on a boulder close to the head of the trail. So, um, okay. Uh, Oh, the Garden Club. We've talked, I've uh, talked with the Garden Club. We're going to meet with them uh, next Monday, and they're going to help us with some plantings around the old well head. 
So it, uh, that square there. So uh, see, it, that will be it improve that area a little bit. Um, let's see. Oh, our proposals for next year. Uh, flagpole. We're going to have a flagpole with a solar light so that that will always the flag will always be lit. Uh, we're planning on irrigation system for both out front and for the community gardens. Uh, the uh, we've got the second bridge, the second trail, and uh, more brush. Re uh, we've got brush re uh, removal and trees re removal to be removed off of Patterson Street to improve that area. So um, we're just so excited about it all. <laughs> it, um, I'm really excited. So <laughs> you can tell. We, we can tell. So thank you very very much, and for all your support, and your help, and oh my heavens, all the people that are here, just uh, you know. Neighbors and church and family and you know it's just thank you, thank you, Gordon and I appreciate it. Good evening. First of all, I just want um, Carrie and Gordon to know how proud and happy we are for this award that you've received tonight. You certainly deserve it. Um, Carrie's done a wonderful job in the leadership of the Griffins Dairy Farm Committee. Um, she's kept us going and kept us pushing along, so that's great. But also would like to um, especially reiterate how wonderful it has been for the volunteers in this town that have come forth to help us. We never would have gotten as far as we have if it wasn't for the volunteers stepping forth. So thank you for everybody that's not here and everybody that is here that has been helping us. We have been very grateful. But. We need to emphasize that there is another more need for volunteers, especially when the snow goes, because we need to pick up a lot of the brush and debris that we're trying to get up now on the, along the boundary lines of the property on Plymouth Street. And we'd like to get it all together into the center of the parking lot so that we can have a big burn like we did last year. So we need help with that, and the students, the football players, and um, they were awesome in helping us, but anybody that can help us move some of that stuff into the pile will be very grateful, helpful, so we can plan this burn as soon as possible before the deadline. Um, we also want to thank the Abington Pride Committee um, under the chairmanship of Jean Kelly. Um, they have agreed to add Griffin's Dairy Farm onto their list of available locations to be adopted. So um, anybody that would like to maintain the bed out front that is going to be planted, the flower bed, um, we look forward to have a new sign a contract with the Abington Pride Committee and that bed will be maintained from Memorial Day until Columbus Day. So it's just wonderful what's going on. We appreciate the leadership. Um, we have a wonderful committee and um, we appreciate the volunteers. So thank you for everybody and um, congratulations to Carrie and to, to Gordon. The super people. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> we'll take a, short, a five minute break if we could, just so everybody can leave and congratulate Gordon and Carrie. Okay. Thank you.
All right, we're back on, everybody. Let's go. Our next order of business is approval of change of hours to common victual uh, license 988. How do you pronounce it? Particular? Yeah. Thank you very much, 988 Bedford Street. Four this years is, on the this board is for of Uncle Jimmy's. <laughs> <laughs> That's easier, right? <laughs> this is for Uncle Jimmy's restaurant. I believe they I probably threw it away. Uh, I believe that they want to uh, start work serving, longer hours. They want to work longer. Start That's what they serving do. breakfast. We want to stop breakfast. And this is, uh, oh, you can say your name, Jen. Jen Staines. Jen. And I wanted to apologize to the board, too. I would not normally show up in sweatpants. No, and I apologize. I had, I had surgery last week and can't put jeans on just yet. No so. one's complaining. Yeah. It's all right. I know, but it's just disrespectful, and I feel bad. No, that's all right. We've been, we're good. We've been disrespectful. <laughs> we're we're just, let's go on the record. We're good with it, OK? <laughs> um, let's move on to you. How many hours do you want to work? Well, you know, we want to we want to alternate hours now. I'll be, I'll be cooking breakfast since I owned the breakfast restaurant previously. So we're hoping it'll help increase some sales. and. Okay, so we're adding from, from 11, we're going to open at 6 now in the morning. Yep, Instead everything else stays the same. Okay, and weekends? Uh, same thing. Same thing. 6 to noon on, uh, six to 8 on Sundays and 6 to 10 on uh, Monday through Saturday. Okay, Are you, but you're actually going to stay open later on Sundays now too, right? Oh, did I put 10 on Sundays? Yeah, yeah just in case. We're going we're gonna to close at 8, but okay. if things pick up and we get busier over the summertime, it, you know. Okay, that's fine. So you want the license till 10 on Sundays? Yeah. yeah. And I apologize to Jen earlier. Not I a meant problem. To it was wonderful it. to see. If I had been done earlier, I wouldn't have stayed. So okay. I was glad I got to see it. That was sweet. Motion to accept the change of hours to a location mentioned. Second. Motion made a second. Any further discussion? Um, uh, just before we vote, I just want to mention, since they've been in town, they've been a great supporter of well, the thank uh, you. events uh, and all the charities in town. And um, they did uh, win Best Pizza at the... Um, Pizza Pandemonium. Pizza Pandemonium. Pizza Pandemonium. We, won one of the, uh, we won one of the. Um, and uh, we topics. thank you for your support. You've Absolutely, been a great it's neighbor. our pleasure, thank and we you. look forward to doing it yeah, again. We, we hope, yes, I think we're going to do it again this year. So hopefully, very good. You'll, yep. You'll win again. Sure, we're going to so win them all. Oh, there you go. There you <laughs> and go. Lisa Maybe. actually has your plaque in the car. We will. Oh, we'll good. Whenever. <laughs> 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 it's under all the stuff. Agenda, I would have brought it tonight. She got pizza for us in her car. So we're doing it good. All right. So motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Unanimous vote. Thank you. Very good, thank you. Very much. Good luck. Sorry for the wait. Um, <laughs> we have a seven. We have a, we have a seven thirty-seven right. appointment with the fire chief, John Nuttall. Uh, hey, Bruce. Chief, welcome. Thank you. I'll let you talk about what you want to talk about. Transition. Yeah, you have an exciting, like a several-hour presentation on how the fire alarm system works in town. But <laughs> just That's kidding. all right. Uh, first of all, back to Gordon Bates, and I don't think it was mentioned here tonight, but Gordon was also one of the Abington Call firefighters for many years back in the day. In fact, he had the status of one of the spare engine drivers, which was a call firefighter able to actually drive the apparatus, which was a big deal well before my time, but uh, perfect gentleman. B both of them a couple. But well, it's convenient. To, wait, that, doesn't he back up to the fire station, too, basically, where he lives? He did, yeah. yeah. Back, you know, <laughs> the, you used to hear the horns job. going off, the whistles going off, yeah. and the alarm was coming in, and yeah. which, which is kind of a good segue to, to why I'm here tonight. Um, I think you um, have a packet. You may have got a letter that um, is going to help businesses. Yeah. I've actually got a cleaned up. There's, a, there's actually a typo in that letter, which I have found and fixed. But the purpose that I'm here tonight, um, it's not great news, but it's pertinent, realistic news, um, is I want to send a letter out to, um, there's about 36 businesses in town that are connected to the older municipal fire alarm system in town. Um, but. In speaking with the town manager, and I agree with him that this really, I think, should be somewhat more formalized to this level, uh, at this caliber, as it will be affecting um, how some of the businesses, their fire alarm system is monitored in town. I can either read the letter if you want, I don't know if you need that for the record, or I can just summarize what it's saying. That's whatever you prefer. This letter's going out to the businesses anyways, right? Correct. So I think you can just summarize Okay. Yeah. That's, that's a good Basically, idea. the letter is saying that by the end of calendar 2018, by the end of December, we want to dismantle a portion of the municipal fire alarm system uh, that they are tied into. This affects about 36 businesses and I think about nine town buildings, and they will still have to, by state law, be tied into some type of a monitoring system. It does not necessarily have to be the fire department, but it does have to be a, an agency 
such as ADT, there's other ones, everybody knows ADT. There's other types of central station monitoring alarm systems, that they're called, um, to monitor a sprinkler system, a suppression system, if it's like a, a, a cooking ansel system, if you will. If it's an apartment building of 13 units or above, by state law, they have to be 24 hours a day monitored by a company. Um, the reason that I want to begin dismantling a portion of the Abington fire alarm system is simply it's not, the cost benefit is not there anymore. It is a very antiquated system. We have maintained it. I have a couple of the firefighters that work um, part-time maintaining the, the system, and they have done so well, but th they're really rearranging the deck chairs in the Titanic. And, and I don't take that lightly, and I'm serious when I say that. The original um, telegraph system, which means it's a wired system, there's physical wires that go from the fire station into about four or five main circuits going around town. Uh, and there's a constant a low voltage current on that. The original system was purchased, used by Abington from the city of Newton uh, that was new in the 1920s. We picked it up, I think, in the 1950s, early 1960s, and we have built onto that system. We still literally have some of that original wire from the 1920s that was restrung from Newton to Abington, taken down off of their poles and restrung on our poles. Uh, it's, it's old, brittle iron wire. We're replacing strands of it as we can. Uh, in order to really maintain and, and correct the system, we'd be into the tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, also on the system, besides the buildings, now, now these are the red boxes in the front of some buildings. Um, whereas if a fire alarm or a sprinkler system goes off in that building, that trips that box on the front of that building, which is tied into our system and it goes to the fire station. It actually goes to Holbrook by via radio wave. Um, th those systems, th there's really only about 36 buildings that are tied into that. There's a number of the street boxes. You, you go up, you've all seen them, you know, in the corner of d different areas where you pull the, pull the box. And they do work, but realistically, uh, with the advent of today's technology, with cell phones, we, we get very few calls on those. We, we actually get almost next to nothing. We maintain it, it because it's there. We have issues during the storms. The last couple of storms, we had portions of the system go out temporarily until we can fix it. There is a, a liability system with that because if somebody were to pull that hook or if a building were to come in and that system's down because a tree took down a portion of the wire uh, until we're able to fix it, they may think help is coming, and realistically, it's not until we're able to fix it. Um, the option for any business or the town buildings that are tied into that is to transfer it towards an ADT-type system. Uh, right now, there's a, a user fee. I think it's $100 a year that they pay to the town, which is part of the enterprise account, to help maintain the system. We're losing money on that, to be honest with you, uh, compared to the, the costs that required to maintain it. Um, it what, what they would have to do is tie into either a telephone or radio based system and, and have it monitored that way. Abington is certainly not the first town to do this. Whitman completely dismantled their entire town wide uh, municipal fire alarm system a couple years ago. A number of towns have done this for the same reason. Uh, the cost benefit simply isn't there. Um, I've been working with Rick to look at some of the town buildings and some of the, the town department heads that may be affected on this. It's not everybody, and I'll explain that in a minute, to, to try to give them a heads up on this. There's two, the other original option that we wanted to do a couple years ago, in fact, we had a bylaw change that we're, a couple years ago we wanted to get rid of this system as well because of the same reason. And we wanted to convert those boxes to our radio box system. Now, the radio box system is, is our other half or it's probably about 60% of the municipal fire alarm system whereby we're not physically connected to them. Each individual building has a radio antenna and that signal is sent to us via radio. Um, most of your newer buildings, this building, the library, the new high school, most of the, um, the condominiums throughout town, the big box stores, they all have the radio system. This will not affect any of them. This is, is gonna affect some of the older businesses in the schools in the town that I'm talking about. Originally, we wanted to transfer though the older system to the newer radio box system. And we held off on that really due to the cost. It's, it's about a, a $7,000 um, device per building. 
Uh, it, we knew also that would be a hit to the town as well as my receiving equipment. We wanted to make sure that that was robust enough to receive these. In that time over the last couple of years since we made that bylaw change, uh, we've had a few issues come up with the radio block system that has caused me to pause on adding into that. The new high school has three radio boxes. We broke up the new high school into three separate zones like a mall. <coughs> And it works great, but we had trouble getting those three boxes. It was actually beginning to hold up the project. We did get the boxes, but there was a production issue. That was a wake-up call. That, that, that was one concern, number one. Another concern we had back in the fall during one of the thunderstorms is we lost about six boxes, um, separate radio boxes up off of North Air from a lightning strike. It fried them. We haven't had that issue too much before. These boxes and technology are beginning to get somewhat old as well. The system works. However, seeing where this could be going, I don't want to keep building up this system either. I think we still have a number of years left in this system, minimum five, I'm, I'm estimating, as long as we can keep the parts and the repairs coming to them. However, I don't want to begin building out the system, especially thinking ahead towards Southfield. I don't know what the range is with those buildings. We'd be looking at putting up a probably a repeater system somewhere to get those systems there and from what I've, you know, some of the proposals for Southfield are very massive multi-story buildings where I, I would rather they just become monitored by a central station and not us because we do end up getting a lot of false alarms, just trouble alarms with that and the, the more complex the building, the more runs we're going to be having to go up there to, to investigate that type of a system whereas if it's a privately monitored system, we're exempt from that. The private company checks that. So I'm looking ahead. I, I don't really want to begin adding much into the radio block system anymore. I, I, I will allow the, the public schools, if there are a couple that have to transfer over, uh, we'll add them to it. But long term, which is probably five or ten years, at some point I'd like to, or a fire chief at that point, may want to begin um, also dismantling that system because I believe the cost is going to start to become prohibitive um, for the town as, as the repairs start to come in. We're not talking about that tonight, but, but that question is going to come up. So all I'm proposing <coughs> in notifying the board that I want to send these letters out, um, due to the unsustainability of the current wired system, I would like to dismantle it by the end of the year, end of the calendar year. Uh, that does provide, I think, sufficient time for the businesses in the, in the town buildings to make a change. I know Whitman did it within six months. They had a six-month start to finish. Um, and they ha actually had more businesses, I think, than we do. Typically, each individual building or business will um, contract with whatever alarm company they have. Now, usually it's like a burglar alarm. And usually they can just tie their fire alarm, their interior fire alarm panel into that system as well. There is a cost, which is, again, why I want to present this to the board. Um, I don't know what the cost is, but it, it's, it's going to be a monthly cost versus if they were going to purchase a, a seven to $8,000 radio box. It's probably somewhat of a wash long term. Uh, versus versus businesses. what they're paying now, though, Chief, you said is $100? It's $100 just to the town just to help me. A year, a year. Correct. Yeah. So, yeah, there, there will certainly it's be about, an increase um, with that. But. It's about $60, I believe, with the alarm system at uh, LA these days. Okay. Central Station monitoring. It, it, it's really a, bu a business decision, but it's also a public safety decision. So they have to have an, an alarm anyway. By state law, th there are certain buildings they have right. to have them, correct. That's right. So, but before these letters go out, you know, we'll end up sending these out in the next uh, couple of days, depending on the weather. I wanted to give, I held off on that until I was able to notify the board officially on that, just so you, in case you had any input on that or questions. Um, as well as the financial end on your end, too. Yeah. It's so this, these are all the telegraphic alarms correct. left, correct? So this is. Yeah, I think you have a list. Those are the ones tied into buildings. That doesn't include the street boxes that are out yeah. there. We're not going to remove anything. Once the buildings are transferred over, at that point, we will begin individually removing them, right. ultimately removing the whole system. Yeah. And, w and what determines whether or not somebody has to have an actual alarm relaying to the fire department. It's a state law, actually. It, you know, there's Based some on the size of the really building? Really, the state law. If you have a sprinkler system, if you have an apartment building, 
Um, greater than four units now, traditionally it was greater than 13 units that had to be tied together. Right now it's anything greater than four, four. a lot of them were having them. Okay. So. Thank you. As well as if you have a, a <coughs> suppression system like an Ansel system for cooking or a Halon system, which would be for electronics, w which is actually rather rare. I don't think we have any left in town after New England Art. Any other questions? Isn't that that I, no I, I guess I had a question. For, so what, what's the town's... What's, what is the town thinking as far as the town buildings go? Well, uh, that's something we're still talking to the chief about what the most cost-effective approach is at this time, um, whether it's a monitoring system and a you know, monthly monthly fee, or that's something we <coughs> haven't quite decided yet. So, so. Do the buildings in town have existing systems? I'm sorry. Burglar, do, do, do these buildings all have... Alarm systems? I probably shouldn't ask you this because then. <laughs> well, <laughs> they might be monitored. If I, if I can, uh, I've been talking to some of the department heads on this, and, and I'm familiar with all of the buildings in town, uh, as well as um, some ways to get around this, if, if you will, to, to try to alleviate the cost. Both fire stations have this type of box. However, we're not actually tied to any fire systems within my buildings. It's more of a panic button out front. I'm looking at getting a telephone system, an intercom system that. Um, they're about $1,500 each, so I'd be looking at $3,000 for my two stations, whereby if somebody stops at the fire station and for some reason there's nobody there, which does occur on a daily basis if we're out on calls, they can pick that up and that will go directly to Holbrook. Mm -hmm. So they have somebody to talk to, which is actually more information than we're, we're going to get now mm -hmm. because we also will have a camera on it. Um, <coughs> usually it's for a medical emergency, but for whatever reason, instead of just receiving that box, knowing that's the location that there's an issue, we can actually have a conversation. So that's for the fire stations. The schools, I have reached out to the schools. We're looking at the Frolio and the Woodsdale. Um, I think they're just, one of them, they were transferring the old high school, which had one, that box went to, um, I think, the Beaver Brook School, and I think they're looking at perhaps getting two boxes for, for both of those schools. Everything else is covered by them. Uh, the water department's aware of it. The sewer department on Progress Street, Summer Street's aware of it. The uh, the north and center schools are going to be an issue. It, I, I honestly don't think it's worth putting $14,000 into those buildings because the only, however, they both have sprinkler systems which do have to be monitored. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we've been talking to Wayne on this to see if there is telephone lines there if that we can probably just do a temporary ADT type of a connection on that uh, because that is the only notification we have on those buildings right now. Yep. The other building is the Legion building, which... Um, I haven't talked to them directly, but I'm, I'm kind of guessing that would be an ADT type system. Okay. The last two buildings remaining, or the last building remaining, is right up the street at 100 Lincoln Boulevard at the Abington Housing. And that's, we'll do some work with them to see what might be feasible with them. Okay. So. Questions? No? No? Thank you for letting us know what's going on here. Yeah, we didn't want to have anything going out there. <coughs> I mean, to the extent that this is a forum that people attention to and business owners and residents watch it just didn't seem right to be just receiving letters that um, because again we are dealing with it's not like there's an option this is you know, this is state statute we're dealing with and, right. um, so. I, I did have one more question on your letter chief you say please complete the attached document so what are you asking for them what their course of action is going to yeah, be um, we have it, it's more for our personnel it's just a we're looking for who does their vendors for the okay. sprinkler system, who their electrician is, and just to kind of, we, we can begin that, um, Process. you know, communication back and forth to see the best way to do it. Yeah. And, and the other thing is this will not be a surprise to the businesses going out. Most businesses have received over the last couple of years a, a notification letter that eventually we do want to dismantle the system and they're going to have to either convert over or, you know, or do either to the radio box system at the time or a central station monitoring okay. system. At this point, the difference in the letter as well is we're, we're kind of removing the radio block system as an option. Yeah. Um, and by law, they have the choice. They, they don't have to go to a radio block system anyway, but we're going to remove that as a system to prevent building up into um, a system that, that I'm not quite sure where it's going to be long term anyway. Yeah. So I don't, I don't want to waste their money, to be honest with you. Just one question. If, was the town up until this point in time paying for the maintenance of these telegraph systems and these businesses? Do we pay for the maintenance of all this stuff? No, we pay for the blocks from the blocks out. 
it's just like National Grid or the electric company. They pay from the meter out or whatever. Anything internally into the building is, is on, on the them. individual building, okay. correct. And even some of the newer radio boxes, they, they actually own that box. And if there's a repair in that box, that cost is transferred to them. However, in, in, in order for us to immediately repair it, you know, we, we have spare parts that we have to switch out and like that. You know, we, we do try to put that cost onto them, but at the same time, we want to make sure the building's safe. Realistically, the thing that's keeping us going right now is anytime there's a motor vehicle accident that strikes a telephone pole that has our equipment on it, we're putting in a claim on that. That's what's keeping us going. But at some point, that, that's, I'm not sure how long that's going to last either. So okay. the, the system's just quite obsolete. <coughs> and, and I really can't justify requesting, you know, 50 to almost $200,000 to restring the whole town. I, I, I just don't think the cost benefit's there with today's technology. Thank you, Thank you, Chief. All right, yeah, thank you. Thank you. All right, public comment. Bill, not Gotham. Okay. Nothing, Bill. Um, Nothing, approval Bill. of February 12, 2018, open session meet minutes, and then the executive session minutes are from the same meeting. We'll take them separately. Open session minutes. We were all present. Motion to approve the minutes of February 12, 2018. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous vote. Executive session to be held until. And that is a result. So second. moved. <coughs> second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous vote. Uh, we have two used article licenses to renew the designer diva used articles and the ABC tech squad on North Quincy Street please vote to renew pending receipt of all paperwork satisfactory inspections and up-to-date taxes what is that now? Um, we do have something from Sonia our treasure collector says that ABC tech squad has a large number of past due excise bills do we know if they've been taken care of not yet, but the license is in effect through the end of the month, so he's been, he was in touch with us today, and he'll be in this week to pay for that. Okay, so we will definitely want that motion to include. Yep. Any Tax is paid. Do I have a motion? Well, I, I'll make a motion to approve the design, designer diva. All right. Second. A motion and second. Um, did you want to include uh, pending receipt of all paperwork? Satisfactory. Have they submitted all paperwork, Design Diva? Are they all? all yes. Just, yeah, they all set. Okay, then. Yeah, we have a motion and a second right. to approve Design Diva. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous vote. And we have ABC Tech Squad. A motion to approve um, pending receipt of past due excise bills prior to March 31st. Is that the only thing they have outstanding? They have, do they have need an inspection, or is that all set at ABC Tech Squad? Yeah, that's all set, just okay, the taxes. Okay, so it's just the tax bills. Okay, we have a motion. We have second. A, a motion and a second for ABC Tech Squad pending up-to-date taxes. Um, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous vote. Vote to adopt a complete streets policy. Yes, Mr. Chairman, this has been submitted by John Stone um, this past week. It, um, uh, I have reviewed it, but again, it's essentially what John Stone has reviewed and uh, has is proposing. It has been recommended also and reviewed by the engineering company that was presented before you. Um, it meets all the criteria um, and all the points uh, versus the point system that he had discussed when uh, with the board. Uh, in for grantsmanship purposes. Um, I know that you haven't had much time to look at it, obviously, um, but as I said, the, obviously the key to the, uh, the purpose of the complete street policy obviously is uh, primarily for policy and grantsmanship purposes. Uh, but again, John uh, has, uh, this is what he is proposing uh, to the board um, as well as, uh, and again, as vetted by the engineering firm also. So. Uh, again, this is something that can be brought forward at a later date if you don't feel you've had a chance to, uh, to uh, give it a good look. But um, again, John has reviewed this in great detail, as you can imagine. Uh, so, for your can consideration. I know they gave, 
they gave us a pretty good uh, rundown at yes. the meeting. Yes, that's the last meeting. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. does the board have any feelings on this? Do they want to adopt uh, as, as recommended by our DPW director? I have no problem with approving it if that's what the board wants to do. We need to do this in order to get into that so grant process, process right? right? Yes, we do, yes. And we did have the presentation on the DPW right. response that I think we should go along with. I know it's lengthy. As I say, I, I, you know, John has sat with us, and again, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very comfortable with it, but I just know it's, it's detailed, and I know it's been a long agenda, and you haven't had a lot of time to look at it individually. Um, also I don't know what your schedules have been, but it's, I certainly uh, agree with that this does meet the points that were brought out before the board the last, your last meeting, so. If you're ready to move forward, I certainly recommend it, too. I make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor of adopting aye. the complete street policy, signify by saying aye. aye. Sorry. Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Unanimous <coughs> vote. Thank you, Rick. Uh, consider a ban on marijuana retailers. Andy, do you want to take this? Discuss, start discussion well, just based on our conversation last time with the planning board, I went did a little more research on what needs to be done or doesn't need to be done. So if if we do nothing as far as any kind of bylaw, then the... You mean zoning bylaw? Zoning bylaw and general bylaw. Both. I would think you'd want both. But if we do nothing, then the Cannabis Control Commission is the authority that has control over issuing licenses. They can issue a none unlimited number of licenses to any es to establishments in Abington. Okay. You want to try to limit it um, because we voted in favor, the town did, in favor of legalizing marijuana. We can limit through a bylaw without having to go to an election up to or no less than 20 percent, correct, of however many liquor licenses we have. And according to Rick and Dory, we have four, four liquor licenses. Four package store licenses, correct. So 20% of that would be, I guess, one, right? So one pot shop could conceivably come in here if we want to put a question in front of town meeting on limiting to the 20% figure. If you want to go below 20% or do a total ban, you have to pass a bylaw at town meeting and put it on an election for the town to vote whether or not to ban it. Now, the town of Whitman actually is meeting tonight. They have a special town meeting tonight Absolutely on this issue. Get a good quorum. They will, yeah, probably, I don't know. But they did, and then they have a, an election on Saturday. Saturday, yeah. I, I caught just the end of the town of Rockland. Uh, is it just about this issue, or is there other There's other two other, a two, couple, other couple of uh, small uh, things, yeah. but I think this was what primarily yeah. drove them to it. And, and what are they trying to do? To ban it, ban totally. It. So could it? Did Wayne, they, Wayne, did, right? I'm sorry, did they ban it from when they first voted on it? No, they, they voted the same in Abington. It was, okay. there, it was close, similar to Abington. I think the town of Weymouth is looking to ban, total, totally ban it as well. Town and of Rockland. Got a vote oh, do they do so as well? Yeah. Town of Rockland, I think, uh, looking to allow it, but it's going to be over just in the hotel district. So it's going to be limited right. to that area. I'm not sure what Brockton's, you might know what I think. I don't, I don't know, know what, what Brockton's, Brockton's doing, doing actually. No. But my thought is there's a lot of towns surrounding Abington and they're looking to ban it. And if Abington doesn't ban it or at least limit it, then we could be central for, you know, a lot of that yep. type of a business. I don't know if that's something that the town wants or not, doesn't want. Personally, I don't want it, but, uh, you know, my, my thought is I'd like to see it brought in front of town meeting for a total ban, put on the ballot to see if the town wants to ban it, but we can also bring forward the 20% ban. I don't know, is that something we could do, is have both of them there and see what happens? Or I guess you'd have to check with town council on that. But. Well, and it, it, the other thing is that doesn't have to be limited to 20%. If right. you want, it could be 20% and above. So if you wanted to do 50% of whatever liquor license you, you have in town. But I'm, I, don't, I don't think it's a good idea to have it out there unlimited, in my opinion. No, I, I think, I think um, idea. no, I agree. I think it should go to town meeting and see what town meeting decides and then if we're in favor and we have to go to a ballot and we go to a ballot vote. Right. And the other thing we you probably want to look at is if you're going to allow them the local option sales tax, you also have to have a bylaw at town meeting to adopt that. That's just that's not automatic. That's uh, but that's right. So those because are we can add 
um, three percent. Three up to three percent. So there's, I think there's some work to be done here that should probably be done at least for this town meeting, mm -hmm. uh, as far as these go. Uh, Tom or Bob have anything to add to this? Or? Uh, well, I'm, I'm in favor of the town already voted. They, they wanted it. I'm, I'm thinking as a tax person, uh, as an income viable tax person, that um, I don't have a problem with limiting it uh, via the guidelines that Andy has spoken to regarding the number of package store licenses and, and setting a limit of 20% of the package store license, but um, in my limited time on the board, one of the biggest issues this town faces every year is money. And I'm looking at across the country where other states have, or other localities have put this in. They have, they have seen um, tax dollars. Um, I think the local option is a positive option. And we have a local option for meals. We have a local option for rooms. The local option for the cannabis is, is probably almost something we have to do just for common sense purposes to maintain the same structure. But I see it's a, it's a way um, of, of collecting additional tax money uh, and giving what the community has, what I thought the community voted for to get in the first place. So my kind of opinion point of view is, is that I'm, I'm for allowing a limited a number of shops based on Andy said of that structure limitation process. Um, but I'd like to go forward and bring that to the town and see what they have to say. I don't know if you can do both at the same time legally. I think you either have to have one or the other, but that'll be a legal decision to be made. But um, I'm not quite sure you can do both on the, at, at a town meeting. I think you'd have to go with one or the other. And, and just back to the town of Whitman, I think the reason they're doing it now is because I believe April 1st is when the commission starts issuing licenses. So whatever zoning is in place as of April 1st is what potentially they're going to look at when they're approving licenses. So we're still going to be behind the ball here, but the Rockman's in the same position, and they said, but I think that what they're going to do is, once they adopt the bylaw, they're going to send that into the Guinness Commission just so they have it, you know. Tom, you, right. so. Tom, you want to add anything to this, or? No, I'm just listening. I just, um, I think what I'm going to say is, I agree 100% with what Bob just said, 100%. Um, I feel the town, it went to the polls, it was elected, you know, at, what was it, 53%? 54, 53. 53. 53% voted in favor of it, um, but I would like to limit it to one. I would like to get the max tax revenue, 3%, you know, and I would like to zone it so it's in a place that is favorable to the town. Right? So basically, one, and restrict the hell out of it, and make the most of the town off of it. That's the way I look at it. I don't think the demographics of a town meeting, they're different than when you go to the polls, and I don't know if that's gonna work in favor of it or against it, but. You know, just like I'm sitting on this board because the majority of people in town voted for me. You know, the, the majority of people, I was surprised by the vote, honestly. I did not think it would pass, but it did. And the people have spoken. You know, you hear that all time and time again. They've spoken and they, they're in favor of pot shops, whatever they call it nowadays. And I think that as a board, we should restrict it and we should put it where it's the least harm if it's going to be harm. It, and it, 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 not, not to say that they're harmful because there are benefits to it. We, we, we know that, so that's my thoughts. Um, kind and of, kind can of I just respond to that? Just Absolutely. In response? I, th I think what the town and the state voted on was legalizing the sale of marijuana. I'm not sure the town voted to legalize the sale of marijuana in this town. They might think differently now that it's statewide and they know everybody in the state can have pot shops and maybe they don't want them here, but they want them, you know, two towns away or a town away. But I, so well, I think the, the nearby surrounding towns banning them completely is a benefit to us. Depends on your point of view. I guess. Oh, oh, no, <laughs> it depends no, on what's no, no. that And that we have, we, we have so, we will have so much control over it that yeah, if you want to do it here, this is, this is what's, what's going to happen. This is what's going to have to happen. So that's the way I look at it. So I don't know, I don't know. Well, we have some time. Bef When's the warrant close? April 19th. Oh, 19th. Is it April 19th? Hold on. Well, it's not a warrant anyway. I mean, we can always add something if we need to, so, right. <coughs> so maybe you could have for the next meeting. Close on the 16th. Are we meeting, we're going to meet again April this month, or? Uh, April 9th, yeah. 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 Maybe you can have yeah. proposed yeah. bylaws yeah. for this day today. those options. And, and I guess get from town council whether or not 
both the total ban and the limiting. Can we put in front of the counter? Yeah, yeah. how many options? Why not? Like they, they pick one, right? They're going to pick one or the other. Yeah, and I think the planning board is also proposing a, a moratorium. Um, again, I'm not positive on this, but uh, yeah. you know, we'll see. Well, that's the other thing we got to make sure that they, they we talked about that as far as the zone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. You guys talked about how you want to limit it to that end of 123 yeah. and all that. So that still has to be explored, I think, a little bit. Well, that's if the zoning board's going to go with that proposal. With the planning board. I mean, yeah. the planning board, yeah. 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 So that's got to get flushed out as well. But I think this is all important uh, stuff that needs to get on I'll the warrant. The town council and see if, uh, so we're looking at, can we put more than one option in front yeah, of the Yeah, can we put the to a total ban and, and a limiting, which yeah, would or two, I don't know. It would essentially be a one, a one, one right. rather than two. So if, I guess if, that's does, what the board wishes to does everybody want well, 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 Is a total we, ban something well, that the board is but, interested but to in? Be, to be honest with you, we can go with more than one. We well, that's, that's what I was going to raise. So right, right there, I mean, I, I personally would not be more in favor of more than one. I like the 20% number, one, one. I mean, we can maybe decide that tonight. Well, I think we should. Yeah, yeah I do too. I think we need to decide I that mean, tonight, yes. I mean, are the board members in favor of if, if they're allowed in Abington to allow more than one? Or the 20% ban, I guess it would be. Because if another liquor license comes, then that would expand the 20%. That's the statutory. Yeah, the 20%, yeah. I mean... If you're going to allow them, again, I'm not in favor of them right. at all, but if you're going to allow them, I would absolutely want just 20% of whatever liquor license. You can always expand that. You know, you're know, going to see how things go. So this is kind of the first steps here. So and it's 20% of the package store. Correct. Right. Of the, of the, the number of package stores. Only have four. Of all, yeah. Of all, yeah, exactly. Of, yeah. Not the beer and wine, but the all mm, farming yeah. package mm. stores, which are essentially all alcoholic package stores. And we're currently only allowed four, so it wouldn't increase until uh, the census. Right, yeah. I mean, so I, have, I have increase all that too in the legislature. Oh really? Yeah. Um, uh, man, I would be a fit. I'd entertain a motion if somebody wants to make that motion now. At least we just get the ball rolling on this process. Well, I uh, yeah, I would agree with that. I I kind of have to agree though with um, Bob and. Kenny, I voted against it, but the majority of the town voted in favor of it. Um, but the majority of the people in Whitman voted in favor, and they went to town meeting for it. So um, I'm not sure right now how I feel as far as going to town meeting or banning it. Um, um, can I ask you this then? Can, can we maybe just, we can always bring that forward next meeting, right? right. That, so if we go back to the three bylaw changes, one with a total ban, one with a, whatever we decide as mm -hmm. far as the percentage goes, and one mm -hmm. with adopting well, the local option. Well, I'm definitely in favor of only the 20%. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm definitely But you're not favor. convinced but, uh, one way or the other. Yeah, right? I'm not so take some time yeah, to think about yeah. it. Because we don't have to, as I said, we don't have to adopt any of these until we come back. But at least we'll have something solid in front of us at that point in time. Well, but I think you're right, Tom. I can't. I think the 20% or the 30, whatever you want to do, I think yeah. you need to decide that tonight. I think that's yeah. something that you should decide tonight. That's, that's why I said, you know, the minimum, we decide where it goes and we decide to get the best tax revenue from it. So 20%. Like yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what we all do. So, <laughs> so is it, I guess I'll entertain a motion to uh, put a limit, tw a cap of 20%, basically one. I'll second that. A motion. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Further discussion. That's that's not etched in stone, but no, but that's where we're that's headed. The, that's the max. Yeah, the max. Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah. If we approve it, and if, if yeah, it's yeah. That at would least be the that's max. That, that would be the the article that you would draw up, I guess, is okay. with that twenty percent max. Okay. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So unanimous on that. Okay, good. All right, that's the start. As long as we can come back with those other two, right? We're going to discuss the ban again. The motion was if we allow pot shops, we will limit it to 20% of right. the liquor stores. So there's. If we allow. Okay. Okay. We haven't voted to allow it. Yeah. We're just voting that if it is approved, whether it's by this board or town meeting or, or however, it will be limited to 20%. That's our proposal. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And in terms of a, a total ban conversation, uh, 
I think we'll discuss it at the I, I, I think so. Yeah. But I would ask that you at least have something draft. Can we all agree to that, that we at least have an article drafted just in case we want to adopt it, it's ready to go? Sure. Well, fair enough. I think we should have the several articles yeah. drafted yeah. as we discuss. And the one, and the one with the, um, uh, the, local, the, the local, local option Local tax. option tax would be yeah, approved. Well, just as, a, as a, an aside, um, the planning board, as a zoning article, the planning board would also have to prepare to hold a public hearing on the question of a total ban, too. Right. So I can ensure that they are prepared to do that yeah. in, in the event that yeah. the board adopts. Yeah, I think they'd have to hold a hearing on yeah. either one, right? They would have to hold it on, on, on both. Yeah. If, if they want. I believe, um, I and this. I haven't okay. heard in the last couple of days, but Rick Collins is preparing um, a forum, and the date he had given me was April 10th. Okay. At the high school auditorium. Um, to get both sides, so the people could get both sides of it before town meeting, well if it goes on. Well, that's good timing because at that point, any articles that are on the wall that the board is putting forth would be known by then. So that yeah. would be okay. Very good. We good? Very good. Yeah, special town. The warrant closes on April 16th. That's what we voted for last week. Next on the uh, agenda was the discussion on surplus land parcels. Um, in front of you here on the table, um, we have copies of all the surplus land. Pass that one down. I can share that one. Um, we have we had mentioned uh, in several meetings about selling off or plausibly selling off surplus land, and, and the chairman asked to get a copy of the plot plans of all the localities. Um, Dory worked uh, very hard to get this totally done, uh, and so I want to thank her for that. But this is an attachment which which shows by by section where all the vacant land is, or surplus land is, and where it's located, where the abutters are, um, so we can make a better determination on next steps uh, and processes of how we want to handle surplus land. My understanding is that um, we would have to do a vote and propose the sale of the land mm -hmm. uh, as a committee, as a board of selectmen, mm -hmm. before we could put it out to public for the sale. we have to go back to town meeting. But the town did authorize us to identify surplus land, yeah. right? But it didn't authorize us to sell it. That's right. So we could have a motion to sell it, and then we go to the town to get their approval. Special 50. They've been declared surplus by the town. Right. These have. Yes. The last time we saw all the highlighted orange spots and all the different plot yeah. points. And just a reminder, our last meeting, at the meeting that we discussed this, uh, we gave a, a piece of paper with all the, the properties that the surplus land committee thought would be conservation, and we were, we're going to ask the conservation commission to review them and come back and say yes, well, you know, we, we agree, we'll put conservation um, stamps on those. Yes, and I, I think that's on their next agenda. Right? Okay, I think so. Okay. Um, so there's <laughs> quite a there's quite a few properties. Yeah, are, yeah. Uh, I don't know how the board. We we discussed before. I remember. Um, Alex mentioned about what Brockton does, and we were going to follow up to see how Brockton yeah, is really um, surplus land. Brockton's having some issues how that was done, so we're going <laughs> to skip right over that. <laughs> <laughs> we, we don't want to know what they do with plants. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the council didn't like the way that was being yeah. handled. So, so I think what we would have to do is um, hire an auctioneer, I would assume. Why don't we uh, just, um, what Brockton did is they um, advertised the land and then they came to town hall or city hall and there was an, uh, they, they're not out at each piece trying to sell them. Right. You know, they sell them here at town hall and I don't know if we would need an auctioneer or if we could just do it, uh, if Rick could be the auctioneer and sell it, you know. I, 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 don't, I don't have experience in that, <laughs> doing that. I think the, the biggest issue we have is that a, a lot of the properties would only be wanted by maybe one or two abutters. Right. That abutted. 
no. and a can lot of the properties aren't going to be wanted by anybody. Right. Probably. Can, sure. can we? Can we? <coughs> is it legal to approach the abutters and say this, no. this is available? No. You know, I think you said that already. Yeah. Yeah. So that situation just happened in Brockton, right. right? And the person had to go there and bid on it, and, and they did get it. But yeah. Uh, no, I mean, I, I was the only well, person that was uh, But, you know, to make them aware that there's an auction. You can, you can make an abutter aware, but yeah. as long as you fulfill every other public advertisement requirement, oh, okay. you, can, you can let, it's okay to, to, to let a butter and a butter and know, but as long as you fulfill the public bidding requirements. And yeah. the babies. Right, and I, I think the other thing you'd want to see is you're going to consider putting a price on them, you know, a, a not minimum, lower than. Minimum. It's going to cost us money to yeah. convey these right. lots also. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the town assessor could just put, put a price on it. Right. It's already a set price on it. Land that was made. So can, can you just clarify here? So we've, disc we've declared these surplus, or the town's declared these surplus. Correct. Do we, and I think, Dora, you said we have to go back to town meeting to get approval to sell it? It has to be yes. a correct. So f I guess the first thing you have to do is decide, decide which parcels you want to sell before we can go that's do anything, right? Yes. I apologize for both of up this whole can of worms. No, I think a lot of work, but I mean, so some of some of so it's got but to be I think done. yeah, but yeah. I, I I would really want to hear from what the conservation commission has to say because some of these parcels are. Didn't we already offer it? And no, ask these, them these for parcels are highlighted, not the conservation. Oh, they're not. They're okay, not. so these, these are just are, no, all right. these are just the parcels. So what we need, if, if the Conservation Commission is meeting tonight on whether or not any of this land should be taken in as conservation land, we would find out tomorrow or the next day, I assume, eliminate that list, and then ask the assessor to put a price tag on the remaining items that would be available for sale, and they would meet as a board to make a determination to put those items out based on that minimum requirement back to the town for the warrant before the 16th of April. I think, too, what you might want to do is, is talking about an auctioneer is, is talk to them and see about setting the price, whether the assessors can set the price or it might be more beneficial for the auctioneer to set the price or at least take a recommendation from an auctioneer, you know, that does that, yeah. that does right. either tax title or something like that because, mm -hmm. um, you know, somebody could have a piece of land next to me that I want to get and the assessors say it's valued at 10,000, but, you know, if I could get it for a 1,000, it puts money, you know what right. I mean? It's no, I know what you mean, yeah. So, yeah. I think I'd rather get some more information from that, from an auctioneer or, or something, or talk to the treasurer anyway. Right. A lot of this land is, the main reason to put, declare it surplus and to sell it is not to make a killing, but to get the tax, put it back right. on the tax yeah. rolls. No. Exactly. No. I do see that center school and North School are included on this, so yeah. are, we, are we making that determination now? Or That's why we had a separate committee for those two problems. Right, so yeah. if we do anything, I guess we don't want to no. include that this time. With I don't think so. Unless they come up with recommendations before, before the town meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So can we get some more information for our next meeting, mm -hmm. stuff that Tom just asked for? Yeah. Yeah. Again, we, we have a little time that we can decide. Yeah. Give us a little more time to review the, uh, well, the parcels. Can you ask around to some other other towns that you would deal with and say, how do you get rid of your surplus? Yeah. Then I'll just call to our pro uh -huh. professional peers and see if they yeah. dealt with yeah. it. And, and I mean, Rick, if you want, I can talk to a couple of tax title or a couple of auctioneers or whatever if you want. I'll be happy to be do that. So. Right. Yes. I, don't, I don't know that Sonia, I don't believe Sonia would have had that experience in Massachusetts yet. And her professional treasury experience is out of state. Is that the only highlighted one we have? Yeah. This, is this one here is highlighted. Yeah. It's it a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> I know it is. So it's it's a lot of work. we can have them both. I'll All highlight right. the second one. We're good with that, folks? Town manager's report? We must be done. Yes, uh, Mr. Yes. Chairman. Uh, yeah, man. You just snuck up on me there. Would you say we snuck up on him? <laughs> Don't. <laughs> or back. Just a couple things. Yeah. We haven't already covered in some other fashion. Yes, our health agent re-advertisement has uh, closed. We've got uh, a number of candidates we are going to be interviewing tomorrow to screen out for a larger group to uh, hopefully find a, a suitable finalist. 
basically anybody that comes through a snowstorm and wants to drive it out. Well, it, 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 it doesn't look like tomorrow's going to work out for our um, screening process. So, um, but again, we're hopefully at the point where we've got another crowd uh, of candidates that we can uh, hopefully find a, uh, a suitable candidate yeah. to fill that job. Uh, so we'll keep you keep you informed, and we certainly hope that Mr. Manning is going to participate again as yes, he did he before. Is. So. Uh, helping us in that process. So you have my commitment. Excellent. Uh, and uh, a number of us, Dory and I, as a number of department heads, including our police and fire chiefs, participated in, and some others in the uh, Read Across America, uh, uh, which is uh, spot was actually sponsored by the Lions last week, uh, reading to uh, a number of grade school children, uh, some cat in the hat books. Um, and they did not give us time to uh, practice Reading. That, sure. one, that one fish, two fish, if you, anybody had to read that. that you cannot oh, practice that. That's a tough one. <laughs> you don't want to practice that's that, trust one. me. So, uh, get tongue -tied. as I said here, it's a, a good <laughs> chance for children to start to make making fun of public <laughs> officials, so it was, uh, <laughs> uh, which they did. And, mm -hmm. uh, so it but it was a lot of fun. It's a, a nice program, a good good chance for us to uh, get, <coughs> get in front of some of the school children at a young age. So uh, my compliments to the school uh, school uh, administration and the teachers. Uh, uh, I happen to be at the Woodsdale. I know I think Dory is across the street at the Beaver Brook. And uh, so and I, it's a nice event. We look forward to it uh, annually. Um, we also met recently with uh, uh, Rockland officials and the uh, Joint Water Works officials to d discuss uh, a grant to d uh, regarding uh, engineering design services uh, to begin looking at making the upgrade of the Myers Ave uh, facility shovel ready. Last year we were unsuccessful in getting a, a construction grant uh, because the project wasn't qu quite ready to go. Um, it was actually a, a million dollar plus grant that we were hoping to get. Uh, so this year, uh, rather than trying to fund the design work uh, through the, uh, uh, you know, through the uh, actual water program, uh, water receipts, we're hoping to get the funding through a grant also. So we're going to continue to work on that. Uh, this is through a mass housing grant, and whether or not that's going to be successful, the time frame is kind of short, but we're going to try to try to achieve that. One way or the other, <coughs> uh, we're going to hope to get grant funds through the Mass Works Infrastructure Program again this year. Uh, again, it was unsuccessful, but we'll try again. Um, one of the things that was in your packet, and it doesn't need immediate action, but hopefully but within the next uh, you know, couple months, um, it would need some action from the board to join what is uh, a statewide opioid litigation effort. Uh, this is an effort um, that is uh, targets the op opioid manufacturers to recoup funding uh, for impact um, uh, for on communities by, uh, you know, the impact of op opioids, um, essentially, you know, for services provided by uh, communities. So I would, uh, uh, KP Law is one of the firms that uh, represents um, communities statewide and beyond in this effort. So I would, uh, you know, ask you to, when you have time to take a look at the material that was in your packet. Um, uh, it's, again, um, there are helpful links also in there um, that I, with in the information that I provided to you. So somewhere down the road, um, whether it's April or May, um, and if it's something you'd like to have uh, council come in and speak to you, to the board about, you know, we can arrange that. I know so some of the surrounding towns have already joined in. Yeah, they're yeah. starting to, to uh, the dominoes are starting to fall on that. So, uh, and one last thing, uh, and I know it was uh, very busy earlier in the meeting, but the, the bonds that you had signed earlier, um, it shouldn't surprise you, but we were, um, uh, the, the uh, Moody's, I'm sorry, State and Employees did um, recertify us at a double A rating, uh, which is what we did were certified for the school. Um, obviously, we uh, would have liked to have been a, at a higher rating, but it was probably un, uh, wasn't quite um, feasible to think we could get a double A plus just yet. Uh, but we were pleased with the double A rating, a very strong double A rating, <coughs> with some uh, very nice commentary from our friends at Standard and Poor's. So uh, Sonia would have 
giving you a nice long speech on that and giving her a chance to say that. But uh, so, um, so, so good work by our by our uh, Sonia in uh, putting together a nice uh, nice piece for Standing and Poor's and our financial staff. So I compliment them for their efforts. So, and uh, that's all I have. But do you do a report? I, I mean, uh, it's good that uh, I like the double A, but do we have something that we can get from Sonia or to do put anything online with the with the double A rating? I know. Uh, well, I'll ask Sonia if she. Uh, for the, I don't have a specific perspective prospectus um, with me, but I, I can see exactly what she. A lot of it's conversational between her and Standard and Poor's. Uh, but I'll I'll see what she sends them informationally and because I know they do a report. I, I yeah. mean, if we could if we could see the report, be happy know, or if sure. either get it online or get it here. I'd appreciate it. Very good, certainly. I'll see what we have. That's and that's all I have. I'd just like to touch upon um, and thank all the public safety officials and uh, department heads that came together in the last storm. Um, yeah. You know, worked hard to you know the fog guys were probably busy, going to be busy again now. Um, I had a little couple concerns. Um, that I, I think you can learn by mistakes. Maybe they weren't mistakes. I, I feel they were. I know that um, I just don't think there was enough communication to the residents of the town. That being said, I realized at one point the town was 98% uh, in, the the, in the dark. So it, it, it doesn't make it easy. And I know that, um, you know, Rick's an example. He doesn't live in Abington. You know, he doesn't have maybe access to get. Um, I just wish there was more communi communication. Not that everyone would have, been, would have been able to read it, but you know, a lot of people still had phone lines. Maybe we could use that that system. Uh, an example is we know that we know now, or we knew at some some point today, that there was no school, and they posted it on the, on the board at the end of the street, which is good. But we also know that there's no trash pickup. Is there something online already? They may have changed the message yes, on the there phone is. system. Yes, is there, they, they sent out. Okay, so everybody in town knows that, or. It's, no. on, it's online and it's on they, their it's phone. It's online. Yes. Well, we didn't send out an alert. Mm -hmm. Everyone yes, in the town there's an excellent. No, 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 I, that, I, I, that you probably can't do, but um, just I encourage people to go on the Town of Abington website and subscribe to the different departments. Hopefully the Board of Health sends it out to everybody to subscribe to their site. Yes, and the Town of Abington, you know, with the general page too, that these updates will go, you'll get an email. Um, the more you know, the better off you'll be. Um, I guess my other concern was that uh, other towns beat us to the punch. You know, we heard about the Whitman Senior Center was open for people to go in there and warm up and charge Probably. their phones and stuff like that. And Abington, to their credit, did that. Um, I wish it had been done earlier, but I also know that they, there was no power at the high school until Sunday because I saw it go, you know, coming home from Suki's, I saw the power go on there. So, and then later on that day, they were doing that. So I just want to make sure that we're not dropping the ball on some of this stuff. And, um, it, it is tough, you know, when people are concerned about other issues, you know, your, your, your basement and your, your, your snow and your, the power. So I just want to make sure we try to keep our residents as up to date as possible. And if there's anything we can do as a board to help that, you know, even if it's, you know, if you want to give us access to the town website and we can post messages if we know, we know things too. I still think the town should have an official Facebook page. Hanover does, Rockland does, several other towns. We don't have to accept comments yeah. on it. But that is where most people go for their updates. And I was updating, and uh, I know Bob yep, was, yep, and everyone was yep. during the storm. I want to thank, I just, Alex, I want to interrupt you, because I want to thank you for, for your posting. Because well, I, I your was posting, getting phone I was, calls from we Rick, and I was out, getting phone out, calls so they were from going uh, well. the police chief, and um, they were actually asking me to post some stuff. So, um, you know, Rick was in town all weekend or most of the weekend. But I think if the town had their own Facebook page, people would be going there, more so than the going to the website. Um, so I think that's something we should look into. And like I said, we don't want any comments. We want it for posting information. Information. Unless there's good comments or bad. No. No. No? What? No. There won't be. There won't be. Exactly. <laughs> You're asking him no, the I wrong agree. question. But I, but I don't think on Facebook that you can, you can prevent Yes, you can. Yeah, you can. Yes, yeah. you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What type of organization you choose? And yeah, yeah. Um, and I will forward um, 
and I meant to do it today, Hanover and Rockland's Facebook page to everyone so you can take a look at it. Yeah, I think, uh, no, I think it's a good idea. I do. I, it's a way a lot of people do That's nowadays. where people are getting get the information. The, they get they're the, not going to the website. They've been doing a great job. I, mean, I gotta say the website has slowly been, yeah. been coming more. But I think Rick should be able to post on it. I told uh, Majenski I think he should be able to post on it. And the police do have their own. Right. Um, the quick stuff like that, the face, Facebook is, is that's the way that That's people, where they're going to get the information. Right. And they can even link their own pages to it if they have an update on their own pages. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So it's well, we'd, we'd limit the number of people that could right. the common heads. Oh, oh, yeah. It whatever. would be just a few yeah. department yeah. heads only, yeah. you know. To, to Ken's point, um, the police chief did reach out to me on, a, on their Facebook about a, a question that was asked on Facebook. And he reached out to me to answer the question, and I posted the answer to the question, right. thanking the chief for posting the question. Yeah. So, are our personnel looking at this stuff? Even our own people are looking at the messages right. going out there. So internally, it, it was well mm -hmm. received. Lots of people use it. They do. Lots of people use it. I don't think that would be too tough <coughs> to have a face, Facebook page. Can we get Wayne on that? Yes. Yeah, I always had thought, you know, we have a website. Just go to the website. But, no, but, but, I, but people I, aren't doing I know. that. Don't do that. I know. I'm, yeah. I'm, but they just, yeah, it's just. It's yeah. easier because Convinced. people have Facebook on their phone. And they can just that click link on, on that yep. and just get the link, and they could uh, well, set there. I agree that the, right. this, this yeah. last week kind of convinced me that I've been living in the past <laughs> a little bit on that particular thought process. That uh, you know, just posting to our website is a little bit obsolete, especially in terms of the instantaneous mm. need to. Uh, that's what it is. I don't mind calling it you out. No, that's fine, <laughs> and I don't mind posting it, but. And but I think the town right. should have an and official. And Not everyone is friends with me on Facebook or my Selectman page, so right. you know uh, a lot more people would um, join the, the the town page. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So. And it's easy to post on Facebook too. So I mean, any of us, any department heads, can just do it right from the outside. Yeah, it's right. very yeah. simple. Yeah. simple. So yeah. I think it's no, a I great idea. So that, that'll be up tomorrow. Thank you. If you guys have the day off, you'll have time at home to. Uh, I got a couple of things that we could if we can close out. Um, I just want to do a follow-up on the MBTA. I did. I do have a call into that John Carrega, and I haven't heard back from him, but I will stay on top of that because we had talked about he was going to give us some possible solutions for North Ave, uh, a gate on Summer Street, which still isn't there, and um, most importantly is the education and the, and schools. the schools. We want to get yeah. that going. Yep. Um, so I'll continue the follow-up on that and hopefully have a report for the next meeting. A um, couple of people have reached out to me from the uh, Little League, from the soccer, and um, I would like to create a committee to uh, do an inventory um, and a capital plan of all the parks, playgrounds, basketball courts in town. Uh, and I know there is something in a master plan about it, but I think... Um, I think we need something updated now. What I would like to do is to come up, have this committee come up with um, complete inventory and what the fields need to uh, be brought up to par, I guess, where, where they should be. Um, you know, some of the fields might just need clay, some might need other things, I, I don't know. But I would like a complete list. Um, I've spoken to John Stone. Uh, I put a call into Rory, I haven't heard back from him yet. I've spoken to um, someone from soccer, someone from baseball. Um, I'd like this committee to uh, consist of someone from all the sports, the youth football, uh, everything. And I would like a complete inventory of the fields, what they need by the end of the year. And um, then I would like to ask the Community Preservation Committee that to see, uh, just say it's a million dollars. I have no idea what it's gonna cost to bring every park in town up. But um, we could bond that and pay for that with community preservation funds over the next five years or whatever. Rather than little piecemeal, you know, I know they're doing fence this year and they're doing a few other things. But uh, we're getting a lot of complaints about the fields, the Green Street field. You know, if it rains too heavy, they can't play baseball there. Uh, the soccer program is going to um, Weymouth this year. And we have the facilities. I think they need to be brought up to, to where they should be. So I'd like you to think about that. Maybe we can discuss it at the next meeting. And if you agree, we could uh, form a committee to do that. 
So an I have one. No, I don't, I, I don't think this is, he asked that if you right. put on the agenda, I think yeah. that's what should happen. Yeah. I'm not yeah. sure we should sit here and talk about something right. that was not on the agenda yep. before tonight, so. Um, department updates, we've been doing that every meeting. Um, one that we haven't heard from the Strawberry Valley. I'd like to get them in uh, fairly soon so we can get an update on that. I don't think a lot of people understand uh, the whole situation over there at Strawberry. Abington doesn't actually run that. So I think uh, it's time to get them in. Um, and the other thing I was gonna announce is that, I um, thought we got the email tonight that uh, school safety program has been changed to March 26th. But are we meeting on March 26th? Well, we can post for that night if you'd like, but um, I'm, I'm, that's a meeting that I, you know, some of us tend to go to. That would be a, a meeting night, right? And the fourth, Monday. Yeah. Um, On our monthly meeting. Yeah. I, I think it's important that we're at that. I'm sorry? I think it's important that we're at that school safety meeting, but I understand we have a meeting that night. I've heard from a lot of parents that want the <coughs> selectmen there. That's why I sent that email out the other day. Um, That's a Monday night. Yeah. yeah. We can just meet another night. Weeks from, two weeks from tonight. Two weeks from tonight. Two, two yeah, weeks. Yeah, we don't yeah. have anything on. We don't have anything on our agenda till April 9th. I mean, if you, if, if the board wanted to go to the yeah, March 26th meeting, that would. What time that meeting start at? What's that? When does that meeting start at? Six thirty. Six thirty. It's the same time. Six thirty. So I mean, if there would be a, an open night. So we are we going to have time to get everything, you know, for town meeting and everything if we put it off? To, yeah. yeah. April 9th? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. It's, it's, our, it's our warrant, so if right, we want to put yeah, stuff on yeah, there, yeah. we can. Yeah, it's, no it's for everybody else to get their yeah. stuff into us. Yeah. So, yeah, I'd be in favor of uh, and we doing can, that. We can schedule another, another meeting, too. Meeting too. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm away the 27th, 28th, 29th. So. No, but I mean, oh. the first week in April, Yeah, if something come up and we needed to, yeah. we could meet oh, the yeah. first week in April then, yeah. But if we went to that, it's... If we went to that safety meeting, all of, would we have to post them in? And well, we don't have to. Right, right, so. just, yeah. just in case, right? I would. Well, I guess, well, technically, every obviously, you can people can show up for a meeting. Right. They all right. be in the same place at one time without posting. That's, you know, obviously, if you go if you have an agenda and wish to deliberate. Yeah, you shouldn't be there deliberating. That's a different that. issue. But, you know, so a board can all show up at the same place at the same time without yeah. posting a meeting. Yeah, I don't see that's something Kenny and I have been talking about. But yeah. if there's some reason to deliberate on something, that's a different issue. We'll yeah, know. but you'll know closer to that we'll anyway. Closer yeah. to the meeting yeah. date, correct? Okay. Yes. All right. So do do we want to have another meeting, uh, another board meeting before April 9th? April 9th to next to next. Well, I, I don't know. Like you said, if something comes up, yeah. we could meet at six o'clock that night. Right. Right. If we had to. True. Yeah. Just okay. see how it shapes up. Anybody can else anybody has? Okay. If not, motion to enter into executive session for the purposes of negotiations yeah, with non union personnel, strategies pertaining to collective bargaining, and not to re reconvene an open session. Uh, roll call vote. Tom? Yes. Alex? Yes. Yes. Bob? Yes. Chairman says yes. 